Uh, tonight we've got Jim Vandermeer uh, to give our talk. Uh, his talk is, is, is titled Installing the World's Biggest Mills at Cape Preston. Jim is the Executive Director and Principal Engineer at VDM Group and his, um, and his talk should be extremely interesting, particularly the, the size of what he was... I spoke to him earlier and he was saying how big these mills are. Uh, these mills are being installed at Cape Preston. The sag and bull mills were made in China and shipped fully assembled to the site. Uh, the size of these mills uh, presented a unique challenge on how to lift and put in place with tolerances of a millimetre. Uh, Jim will explain during his talk how they came about with a solution, up with a solution, or the determined solution for this. Uh, this has involved the lifting frame and, and strand cable lifting device specifically designed to lift and place all the 12 mills, uh, cutting installation time uh, from days to hours. So could you please put your hands together to welcome Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, but I believe that mining engineers aren't gentlemen, is that right? <laughs> anyway guys, um, I'd like to share with you a, uh, a project that I've been involved with from, from day one. In fact, I think I got the idea at three o'clock in the morning one day and couldn't go back to sleep. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it just shows you what, what, what's possible if people believe in you. And, and I really do thank MCC for that. They, they, were, they, were, fan they were very gracious in, um, in giving us the chance to, to do this particular project. Um, this is a very exciting project. It's a very large project. There's um, six ball mills and six AG mills. Um, very early on, the client decided to, um, to assemble these mills in China and bring them to site in one piece. Um, I think probably a good idea because, because of the, co the cost of labour up in the northwest is so high and the time taken to put one of these mills together in situ would have been, would have been very long. Um, so we were contacted by MCC first of all to carry out the, the cradle uh, structural design which is the, 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 the large steel um, structural members under the mill that, that are used for the transport and uh, later on for the installation. So um, the AG mills were, um, as you can see, were 1,300 tonne each and the ball mills were, uh, were 800 tonne each. It was MCC's intention not to, not to lift them but to jack, the, jack them and skid them. So I'll just quickly go through. This is what we were presented with um, at the time we started talking to them was, was actually, you could see that um, uh, the pedestals are very high. Th these, are, these mills are about 18 metres off the ground. Um, and um, so uh, they arrive, as you, as you can see in slide two, they arrive on, on transporters. Uh, then they are uh, jacked off the transporter. Oh, sorry, that was the intention. And then um, we go to the next slide. And then um, skidding beams were inserted underneath the, uh, the mills. And then you see this you see these um, <coughs> jacking stools. They were designed to then uh, take the load off, the, off these corner jacks and slowly, um, slowly the mills were jacked into position, as you can see. There are the skidding beams there. And then we see some beautiful pink temporary columns come in. Um, so here you're at, you're, at quite a, you're, you're quite a height. Now remember, this takes, this takes a lot of time. This, this, uh, this uh, jacking, you're trying to insert steel work underneath, underneath your, 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 your load. It's, it's hard to lift. Um, the best I could think of is probably a big forklift or something, but it's very, very difficult to swing a load underneath yourself here. Uh, so um, I looked at this and as you can see here, the skidding beams are in place. Um, this has a tendency to sway a lot. Uh, can you imagine this sitting up here and a cyclone comes along? It's certainly... Um, and, and that's something that, that's a very real thing up there. Uh, you, you know, you sometimes you get maybe three day, two or three days warning. And with, with you sitting up there with 1,300 tonne, and you've got nowhere to go. You've got absolutely nowhere to go. So <laughs> down, yeah. Ma and maybe the cyclone will help you get down as well. So um, we looked at this and with all respect, we said um, we've, we felt it was difficult, it was slow, high risk, and it was very expensive. So um, we've had we've had 
VDM has had a bit of experience in the past with heavy lifting. Um, and so I'll just quickly show you a something we lifted several years ago which went very, very well. Um, so, and this particular job was the Harvey Dam intake tower. We, um, and these are the, 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 the structures for, for, for bringing the water into the pipe. Uh, construct, conventional construction methods involve lots of scaffolding and time, and we proposed actually lifting the, ho uh, sorry, building a hoist house on the ground and lifting it into position with pre-stressing jacks. So uh, after lifting the hoist house, floor was pre-stressed onto the shaft and the lift took less than a day to complete. So these are some of the pictures of that. So heavy lifting to us wasn't, wasn't an issue. It was, we've done it before. Um, just watch your, you know, just make sure you've got plenty of safety, do it nice and slow, and, uh, and use good equipment, just use good, good gear. So we said to, the, to our client, look, we'd, we'd, we'd prefer to do a, a different way. Um, and so with the help of Johnny, Johnny, who's, who's one of my senior engineers, speaks fluent Chinese, that was very, very important that we had that, that ability to talk to, talk to them uh, in their language. They speak English. But remember that it's uh, um, it's difficult for them. I can sp I can speak no Chinese at all. At least they can speak English. Johnny was fantastic in helping me to, uh, if you like, um, convince the client that, that we knew what we were doing. So, so these are some of the statistics of the mills. Uh, the ball mill was uh, 8.6 meters in diameter, 19.5 meters long. Uh, final position was uh, 18 meters above the ground. The AG mill, a little bit bigger, a bit a little bit shorter, but lot heavier um, and that was about 10 meters above the ground so uh, we f we went to see an AG mill uh, assembled on the wharf in um, in China and, and we, we got out of the bus and I just about shat myself <laughs> this thing was so big and I thought gee whiz I, th I just <laughs> just hope we've got it right because they were huge this is the actual plan layout of, of, of the uh, of the project so we have at this end we have the first two lifts here so we, we um, the, the, the plan was to lift the first two mills, in, that's the first line there, then move all the, all the lifting equipment to this end, and then install these mills uh, in this sequence, that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, from that end. Um, now, the reason why this method was, was, was so uh, attractive to them was because getting the transporters into that location and to that location was relatively simple. Trying to get a transporter into these locations here with a jacking system was almost impossible. Just in view of the, the, the lack of room around here, the turning circles required. So they, they, saw, uh, uh, they quickly saw the benefits of, of using this type of system. Um, so now I'm going to show you a video. Now I'm going to, this video, there is some repetition in it, please. You'll, uh, it's video that we prepared uh, for our client, but also for our, uh, not only for the client, but also for our own staff, so that they understood what we were trying to do. So this is the uh, installation of the ball mill. So here we have the, uh, the, the rails, so you see the twin rails. Uh, we, we install a very large lifting frame. Now these temporary works were made, um, designed here of course, but made in China. We got local prices, but they just, they, they were way too expensive. There's 2,000 tonne of temporary steelwork, which is used, well, used you know, six times. It's, uh, there's uh, six AG and six ball mills. So here on top of the frame, we have the lifting gear. So this is the construction sequence. So you see these, these are the strand jacks on top with good access for all, all, the, wor all the work people. Safety was a big issue here. These are the transporters, which we, again, were designed here. In, uh, the bogies were built in West Australia. The steel was built in China. So this thing here, uh, this is the, this slides in under the mill. When the, when, when the, so we, we virtually, first of all, pick up the mill with the, with the, uh, the jacks on top here. Then we slide in the transporter. And we lower the mill onto the transporter. Then we take the transporter out under the lifting frame. Then we build up the lifting frame with towers to get us to the right height to allow us to lift. 
These are all prefabricated modules that fit together fairly simply. So there aren't many lifts in this. There's a, a very few lifts. All the, all the lifting gear comes as a module. So we, lift, we then lift the actual mill to get over this V uh, block, which is the bearing. We then take the mill over the position and then we lower it down and I'll just stop it there for a sec. Now at this stage, uh, you don't just plonk it on the bearings. It's, it's a very fine positioning and with a swinging load, it's very, very easy to do that by horizontal hydraulics. Um, so that's the first way we did it. The second time I got a bit smarter than that, we actually built very large screw threads so that one, one turn of the thread with a handle that I put on the nut, like a, about a 300 millimetre diameter handle, gave me 0.1 of a millimetre movement. So once it was swinging and I had, I had enough of these screw positioners in place, I can put that mill exactly where they want, where the, the, the installer wanted it to go. 